I keep feeling the virtue. Turn your Bibles. Hallelujah! First Corinthians chapter 2. First Corinthians. The Lord leads us upon my heart. is verse 8, but we will start from the beginning, but the main verse of thought is verse 8. First Corinthians chapter 2, verse 1, and I, verse 8, which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. Church, say praise the Lord. Praise and then we'll go from the beginning. This is a verse that was laid upon my heart. You see, we give a lot of reasons for why we do a lot of things. And sometimes, when it's all said and done, the only explanation we can give is that I didn't know. If I had known what I knew, then I would not have responded in the same way. The Bible said that if they had known who Jesus was, if the princes and rulers of this age would have known that Jesus was the Lord from glory. Anybody hear me? If the Pharisees had known, if Pilate had known, if the Roman emperors had known, then history would have been changed. They would not have crucified the Lord from glory. I feel the virtue. Is anybody understanding me? If they had known who he was, they would not have touched him. But they didn't know. My question to you, or uh, my thought I want to uh, express to you is this. A lot of things we have done And regardless of our age or our intellect, we didn't know it was not the wisest thing to do. Wise men are not always wise. A lot of things we have done in our Christian walk and have said that we repented of and we said if I hadn't known what I do now, I wouldn't have done it or said it. Anybody hear me? And the Bible says if they had known who Jesus was, they wouldn't have crucified him. Now, my question of thought is this. Is anybody hearing me? Now that you know who he is, if you know who he is, do you still do the same things? Now that you know who Jesus is, Do you still act and think the same way? Now that you know, if you know who he is, do you still crucify him? If they had known who he was, they wouldn't have done it. I feel the virtue. Now you say you know who Jesus is, young and old. Are you still doing the accursed thing? Are you still walking in the blasphemous way? I feel the virtue. 
Are you still crucifying Christ afresh? This time, it is you who is the cross. This is what the Lord laid on my heart to ask you. Now that you say you know who he is, does it make a difference to obtain that knowledge? It does the knowledge of Christ change your way of thinking? I feel the virtue. Now, you know what Jesus said about that generation? Anybody hear me? He looked at that deceitful and wicked generation. And the scripture said that they had to know who he was. They were in the crucified. So he got on the cross and he said, forgive them for they know not what they do. But can he say that for you? Can the Lord say for us, forgive us, Lord, forgive them for they know not what they do. How many times we have transgressed the Lord and we know what we're doing? If they had known who he was, they would not have done it. Does the knowledge of Christ affect you in any way? Does the knowledge of Christ purify you? Does the knowledge of Christ help you to change your behavior? Does the knowledge of Christ help you to, amen, have within you a, a clean heart? Does the knowledge of Christ cause you to lift him up and exalt him? Are you doing anything purposely against God now that you know him? 2 Corinthians, 1 Corinthians chapter 2 verse 1. And I, brethren, when I came to you, came not with excellency of speech or of wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. For I... Paul said to the Corinthians church, when I came to you preaching, though he was an educated man to speak several languages and was learned and concerning the law, blameless, a part of the highest sect of the Pharisees and of the Jewish religion. He said, I didn't come to you with a lot of words of wisdom. Paul said, I didn't come to you when I came preaching to show you my intellect. He said, I wasn't pushing my intelligence. I didn't come to you with excellence of speech, declaring unto you the testimony of God. You see, the problem is with a lot of us so-called Christians today, religious people today, we talk too much. Jesus said a lot of people, they pray with a lot of words, thinking that with much words, they shall be heard. Thinking that much words impress God. Your intellect does not impress God. The Holy Ghost comes with his own set of wisdom. God doesn't need our wisdom to express him. He gives us the wisdom to express him. And the Bible says when they come up against you, take no thought of what you're going to say. He said because the Holy Spirit will word your mouth. We may build up our carnal intellect, but why not build up our spiritual intellect? Which is far more greater. And yet leave not the other undone. He said, but I didn't come to you with excellence of speech or wisdom, declaring unto you the testimony of God. Read. For I determined not to know anything among you, save Jesus Christ and him crucified. Paul said, I didn't come trying to dig up your past. I didn't come to try to find out what you did or didn't do. This is how the Holy Ghost operates. He said, the only thing I wanted to know was Jesus Christ and him crucified. Only thing I wanted to know about you was have you been delivered? Are you willing to accept salvation? Is anybody hearing me? He said, I didn't come scrutinizing your life and amen and bringing up a rap sheet. He said, the only thing I wanted to know was have you accepted God Almighty? I want to know the Lord Jesus Christ and him crucified. Has he changed your life? The Holy Ghost leads us to repentance and to forgiveness. The spirit of the world leads you to accusation and remembrance of the things that God has brought you out of in a wrong way. Yeah, for the virtue. It is not of the Holy Ghost to come, amen, condemning and rejoicing in iniquity. 
You know, so many people, amen, you can tell what's spiritual you know, because you start pinpointing and, re and pinpointing and, and pointing a finger at the wrongdoings and the sins, and you overlook the grace of God in the midst. If you're going to be truthful, tell the truth. Talk about the sin, but then talk about how God brought them out. Yeah. Paul said, I didn't come to hear anything except him, uh, Jesus Christ, and him crucified. Anybody hear what I'm saying? People get upset and they and, and they walk out on God and, 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 and they leave the work of God and they start talking about sin. That's not the Holy Ghost. The Bible says this, what sin, somebody help me with this, what sin abound, what's another word for abound? What sin grows, what's another word? Well, sin expands. Grace does what? It abounds the more. Grace grows the more. Grace expands the more. The Bible said that grace outweighs sin by far. So if I want to look at your sin and you still holding on by the grace of God, how can I not see the grace of God upon you? Instead of rejoicing in your downfall, let me rejoice for the Lord has brought you out. Get you to focus on dirt that God has cleansed you from. You don't look at the dirt of the devil and overlook the cleansing power of the Holy Ghost. Paul said, I didn't come with a lot of words of enticing wisdom. I, I come to know nothing about you except Jesus Christ. Sister, so you did this and you did that, huh? Since you come to know the Lord, has the Lord cleansed you? Has the Lord screened you out? Man, I've been delivered for years. Well, praise God. Amen. How I feel the virtue. I said, praise God. Amen. The angels rejoice for one sinner that repents. Amen. Just one. All of heaven rejoices. Anybody hear me? Oh, you got it backwards. Everybody want to hear the news. Or want to hear the news of past junk and garbage. That ain't no Holy Ghost. I feel a virtue. Where is the grace of God in men? If you can see the hand of the devil, why can't you see the hand of God? Something's wrong with your eyesight. But hear what I'm saying. My God, brother, you come and you talk all this. Okay, I can see all this. Now let me see the grace of God you have seen. No way sin will help you overlook the power of God unless you're looking through the wrong eyes. Is anybody hearing me? David in the end of his death, when he was about to die, the Bible said he did everything right except in the thing of Bathsheba. But when he died, this is what they wrote about David. That's all they said. They called David, that man of God, the sweet psalmist of Israel, because the grace of God outweighed his wrong by far. Is anybody hearing me? Don't you let anybody hold you to the sins that God has brought you from. Whether it be right or wrong, your fault or not. Don't you let anybody hold you to your path when the Bible says, Amen, repent, be baptized for the forgiveness and removal of your sins. Anybody hear me? But you point them to the grace of God and you tell them why you're talking about all this garbage. I'm looking back and I'm wondering how God has brought me over. Don't feed your mind to the devil. I don't want to know nothing about you except this. Have you been delivered? And if you've been delivered, that's all right with me. I said, ah, I feel the virtue. When you focus on sin, you're trying to say that God's grace is not enough. And that Jesus died in vain. Why not rejoice of the good things? But these clouds without rain, without reverence and respect, speak of the things in darkness, overlooking all the light. It's not Bible. Read. And I was with you in weakness, and in fear, and in much trembling. And my speech and my preaching was not with enticing words of man's wisdom, but in demonstration of the spirit and of power. Paul said, I was with you. I wasn't always my best. I was with, with your weakness and your fear and troubles. You've seen the human side. Paul said, but yet. He said, but yet. You can't forget. 
He said, you can't forget that my preaching, in spite of my fears and my weakness and my tremblings, that my preaching was not with enticing words of men's wisdom, but in demonstration and that by the power of the Holy Ghost. Through all my weakness and my fears and my tremblings, Paul said, amen, when it came to preaching the gospel, the Holy Ghost helped me back up what I preached. The power of God was there to deliver. Don't ever overlook the power of God and focus on sin. But acknowledge God when he comes in. Once God cleanses you, once God has set you free, you are free indeed. And don't let anybody hold your pass over your head. And you have corrected your ways. I feel the virtue. Even the world has a program, son, where you can clean your record. I said even the world that knows not God has got a program where you can cleanse your record. Uh, uh, and thank God for that program. They have one as an adult. You can go through so many programs and clean your record. Depends on what it is. Uh, but I thank God that as a child, after, after you turned 16, your record was no longer held against you back in the day. I thank God for that because if, if it wasn't for that program, I'd have never got a job anyway. My brother once worked for the juvenile department in St. Louis County. He decided to sneak in my files, and he called me, he said, look, bro, he said, they ain't got a file on you. They got three drawers full on you. What have you been doing? I ain't been doing nothing. But those of us that have sense knew that after we turned 16, they tried to as an adult. We tried to come up out of it. And so now when they say, you got a record, I said, no. I had three drawers full, but I ain't got none now. Hello, Chuck. Anybody hear me? Now, now, so when somebody comes up to you and, and spiritually say, you got a record and you've been clear, tell them no. Ah! Are you guilty of this? Tell them no. Yes! Weren't you doing this and this, 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 and that? And don't you do this? No. My record's been cleansed by the blood of Jesus. Hallelujah. That person, I don't know what was wrong with them, but this is me now. Church, they pray the Lord. I don't know what was wrong with them, but this is the redeeming of the Lord now. God has given me a second chance. He has cleansed my life, and I'm not going to let you hold my past over me because the past is gone. The past is gone at last. The past is gone at last. Thank God the past is gone at last. Away. How dare you come up to me with some old garbage Try, trying to get me to deny God that brought me out? Some of y'all don't like that. But think about something you did. Nah, that, 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 that you don't like and didn't want nobody to know what you did. So you go for an interview, 20 years later. Uh -huh. And somebody there that's doing the hiring, remember you for what you did. 20 years ago, and they said, don't hire her. You don't want to hire him. This is what they did. Now the person they're talking to thinking you did it yesterday. And so they say, we're not going to hire you. So you decide to come back to the human resource department and talk about it. And the lady said, well, look here, ma'am. I'm going to tell you, ma'am, sir. See, we got a worker here. Don't tell nobody I told you this. And they said, you did this and you did that. And you know, you know what you're going to say? That was 20 years ago. And you're going to be so hurt. How is it that you have moved on, but others don't seem to want to let you? They, they playing God. God let you move on. I said, God let you move on. You read 
what you sow. You don't let people move on, he's not going to let you move on. Uh -oh. And so I got a right to preach this. We don't need to give our ears to things that God has brought us out from, whether they be right or wrong. That's not what Christ is all about. Amen. We don't need to focus on the backsliders of backsliders and the garbage. That's ridiculous. And yet we've seen the power of God in the midst. We see miracle after miracle. Paul said, I was trembling. I was in fear. He said, and I would weep, but the power of God was there. When David sinned, everybody thought David was done for. They cursed him. His son tried to override it. His right hand man turned against him. But they failed to realize though men was upset with David, God never left him. And everybody that tried to bring him down ended up falling down. David was brought to the throne again. Anybody hear me? I said you better let people let their past go. God forgives. That's the beauty of being saved. We can come to Christ and start over again. You mean to tell me, listen, a lot of preachers used to tell me, you know, being an ex, you know, ex street man, nightclub channel, all that kind of stuff you did. They used to tell me, man, when God called me, I ran. I said, when I heard God wanted me, I ran to him. You still want me after all I've done? You still want me? Yes, I'm coming. You mean to tell me you can give me a brand new life and forgive me? I ran to him. Then made sister run from him. Holy Ghost is upon me. You need some things you need to erase. Anybody need to erase some things? Anybody need to get rid of some things? Anybody need your conscience cleared of some things of your past that's haunting you? Does anybody need to be released from some things? You're in the right place. Because Jesus can do it. If you can erase things, what makes you think God can't? We've been taught to erase things from a child up. Back in the day, you come take them texts. They said, bring a number two pencil and erase it. You do something wrong, teachers say erase it. Now, back in the day, as you got older, they started making you use link hand. That'd be more precise. But coming up. And then they came up with the white out. Computer age is the delete. It's always been put in us the ability to erase things. God can erase things. Lord, can you erase this in my life? I can. Yes, I can. And then, and then when we delete, white out, erase, we don't leave the blank. What do we do? We put it in right. Correct. God said, I can erase it and you can try it again. Anybody hear me? I feel a virtue. You can try it again. Paul said, I didn't come talking a lot of words. I don't want to know nothing about you except Jesus Christ and him crucified. Are you ready to change? Are you willing to start again? Are you willing to let God give you another opportunity to live this life and run this race? Paul said, the power was there. Read, preacher. 1 Corinthians 2, 5. That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men, but in the power of God. Now that's when the gospel is taught right. I know things go down and people say things, son, and people do things, but why are some people still standing? Because this gospel was not preached to you with enticing words of men's wisdom. Anybody hear me? Paul said, I brought the gospel to you with power and demonstration so that in case something went wrong with me, you still have faith in God. Because I showed you the power of God. Anybody hear me? And we've seen the power of God that nobody can deny. I, I, I had a phone call the other night and, and a little baby was sick with asthma, breathing hard. And they called me and they said they're already asleep, Bishop. And they were... I said, well, where are you? They said, well, I'm in the room. I said, well, lay your hands on them. 
I said, in the name of Jesus Christ, I'm on the phone and working. In the name of Jesus Christ, Lord, touch that soul. Let the breath of life flow through her nostrils. Let pain be still. And I hung up. But another child was there. And as soon as I said, peace be still, the baby was asleep. Anybody hear me? And when I said, peace be still, she, like your boy did, she went on to sleep. And the older child sitting there with the mother looking said, wow. The power of God. You've seen it. You've seen it, church. I blew my breath according to the scripture, like Elijah and blew all the kids off. I figured if they blew, I could blow. Yes, Thank you. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. Same God. So I blew my breath. I blew my breath. Say, God, in the name of Jesus, let the breath of life flow. And I say, God, let the breath of life, because life come from God. Do you understand that? Yes, and, and we don't have a right to take life. We don't have a right to determine where your life goes. It comes from God. We got to go by the Bible. And I blew my breath. I said, in the name of Jesus, let the breath of life flow through that boy. I blew it once, twice. In Jesus' name, the third time, son said, Papa, the boy went right to sleep. And he's still here today. Your faith is in the power of God. Anybody talk to you, tell them, can you deny that the power of God is there? Yeah, it's the power of God. to the book of Corinthians. Uh, Corinthians was sort of a peculiar church. Uh, it was in a very popular area, known for its colors. Many philosophers were there, well, Plato, Socrates. Many religions were there, and, and, and in the center of such a, such a busy city, we found a little church. And this is where Paul came. The, the Greek philosophy had spread. And there aroused many questions because of the difference of customs and lifestyles. You had the Jews, you had the Greeks coming together as one. The Jews were strong on wisdom and the, the Greeks were strong on wisdom and the Jews were stuck in their traditions and it was quite a difficult situation for Paul. But nevertheless, that ain't how he came preaching. That ain't how he came preaching. Did the preacher preach? Oh, he sounded good. He's intelligent. Or you deliver? No. Ha! Have you been set free? Well, no. But it was a good motivation speech. Give me no motivation speech without that which can motivate me. Church say praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. 
I know a lot of folks used to laugh at the old Holy Ghost preachers. Turn your Bible to the book of I John. It's called First John. Yeah. Turn your Bible to the book of I John. Now I John was put on the island of Patmos. And when they put him on the island of Patmos, and they thought he was gonna die, he said, I John said, I John said, I John said, I was in the spirit on the law day. Now every day is the law day, but on this day, he was in the spirit on the law day. And, and the Holy Ghost come upon him, and we got a book of revelation. They said, this man can't talk, but when he gets through praying, he still laying hands on you and you're healed and devils come out. You hear what I'm saying? The gospel is in the power. How smart you think a fisherman was? Peter had to say, man, Paul teach some things that's hard to understand. He had to say, I don't understand everything that man preached, but Peter said, I can raise the dead. I feel a virtue. Y'all ain't hearing me. Oh, you pretty want to go look at the church saints and preachers, but ain't got no power. It's in the power. The demonstration, not of you. Y'all ain't hearing me. I want to hear your preacher's voice. I'm talking to you. Hey, I'm the boss, huh? And when I get up here, I tell my preacher, I praise God. It's God good. Brother, uh, we're going to meet today after service. Church, hallelujah. Your preacher's voice. Man, your preacher's voice ain't saving me. I want what you, I feel the virtue. I want what you said God can give. You said he can deliver me, I want my deliverance. You say God can heal me, I got faith, I want my healing. I want the power. Show me that God exists. And that's what this ministry is all about. That's what it's all about. Paul said, I was with you in weakness. Yes, we all have them. In fear, that's right, we all go through in trembling. We all tremble, he said, but the power of God was in the midst. Anybody hear me? That your faith should not stand in the wisdom of men. But what? But what, church? But what church? Power of God. But what church? Power of God. But what church? Power of God. So that, that, that means you got no business walking around God, but the power of God never what? Man. Never what? Man. Never what? Man. It never fails. Man. Where is your faith? Read, really, preacher. How be it we speak wisdom among them that are perfect, yet not the wisdom of this world, nor the princes of this world that come to naught. Paul said, We speak wisdom among them that are perfect. That doesn't mean uh, infallible, but that word perfect means mature. We speak wisdom among them that want to know. To them that are matured enough to want to learn God. We speak this wisdom to them son, that want to do the right thing. Notice what he said though. He said, but yet not uh, the wisdom of this world or of the rulers or the princes of this age that will come to nothing. You see, when you try, son, to approach the gospel with worldly wisdom, you're not going to understand it. You see, it's, it's, it's just like trying to, it's, it's like trying to uh, interpret a, a Greek manuscript with a Hebrew dictionary. It's not going to work. You see, so when you come to God, and, and like so many people do, I feel the virtue, when you try to take what everybody else is doing, all this false Christianity, all of these lies, and all these false doctrines, then you try to take these things and fit them into the Bible that doesn't fit. And so people come up with the understanding, well, the Bible must be off. No, 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 you're off. Because the wisdom of this world don't understand the things of God. The wisdom of this world said because of all you have done to write you off. But the wisdom of God says I'll let you become born again. Yeah. I've been in many deathbeds. And the wisdom of the world, you've been that son said, pour the plug. Because they're dead. But the wisdom of God said, arise and they come back to life. Right. See it time. The wisdom of the world. For the master's use. Yes. Yes. Wisdom of the world. Yes. Don't understand the things of God. Yes. Yes. Wisdom.
wisdom of the world had you set up for Hollywood, but the wisdom of God said, I set you up for the Holy Word. All the carnal minded Christians who think you can walk with the worldly mind and be saved, it's impossible. They don't match. They don't connect. You understand? It brings confusion. He said, but those that are mature, those that are perfect, will understand this wisdom. Not the wisdom of the ruler of this world that come to nothing. Verse 7. But we speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, even the hidden wisdom, which God ordained before the world unto our glory. We speak the wisdom of God in a mystery, the wisdom of God, the secrets of God are hidden from this world. But everything God does was for our glory. Everything God did was for the fact that one day he would save mankind from their own sins, from, from, from our own sins. Everything God is doing is for our glory. So when you get mad at holiness, when you get mad at God for telling you to do right, you're getting mad at God for trying to help you. Everything was done for our glory. That he would come and give us salvation because we messed up the world that he gave us. Now watch this. The wisdom of the world is hidden. Now God is hidden from the world. They don't know these things. God has to reveal them to you. So in all your learning and all your education and all your books, you're still not going to understand God. Unless you're taught the spiritual things of God. Read. Which none of the princes of this world knew. For had they known it, they would not have crucified the Lord of glory. You see what I'm saying? They, the wisdom of God was hidden. The Jews, the Romans, all of them could not see that this was the Lord from glory. If they had known that Jesus Christ was God manifested in the flesh, they would not have crucified him. They would not have touched him. But they didn't know. You know, sometimes they say that what you don't know can't hurt you. But I'm here to tell you that sometimes what you don't know will kill you. But if they had have known, this is my thing. If they had have known, they wouldn't have did it. That's why I asked you in the beginning. Now that you know, do you still do it? Once you come into a knowledge of God. I understand you didn't know God, so this is why you did what you did. But now when you say, I know you, Lord, do you still do the same things? I feel the virtue. Son, I heard the scripture. You see, some people, son, they come and say, I know God, and they still do the same things, and they think they're still known of God. But he said, in that day and time, a lot of people are going to say, Lord, Lord, didn't we do this in your name? Mm -hmm. Then we praise you. Then we speak in tongues. Then we, and he's going to say, depart from me. I yeah. never knew you. Ye that worked in iniquity. Why is that? Because all the time you said you knew me, you didn't stop your sin. I'm trying to teach y'all how, how to be, I'm trying to teach the church how to be just as saved as y'all hypocritical. Somebody asked me, I'm going to take that back. Nope, I'm going to say it again. Thanks for asking. I'm trying to teach you how to be just as saved as you are hypocritical. Somebody said, man, I ain't Bishop, he talk. I'm mad Bishop, he keep talking about it. I'm talking about me. <laughs> I'm still here. And it ain't all good, neither. <laughs> but I'm still here. Why? Because I'm standing on the power. Ah, have I been clear? Have I been tried? Yeah. Have you? Want to testify? <laughs> I'm always testifying. But the good man, anybody want to testify? Want to testify your fornications and adultery? Want to testify your... Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You fill in the blank. I've always testified. I've been caught up in a little bit of everything that ain't right. It ain't all been my fault, but I'm responsible. And I live up to it, and I say, Lord, have mercy on me. I'm glad he brought me out. And if I had known what I knew now, I would have never got caught up. And I can say that. Everybody hear me? That was a motivational speaker. Very well known. He weighed some 400 pounds. 
I forget his name, but if I said a lot of you would know. And he, he decided to lose weight. And this is what caused him to go into the motivational scene. And he was losing weight and he got down, you know, to so he was still big, but he got down, you know, quite considerably before he lost it all. And a little boy said to his mama, Mama, look at that fat man. And the motivational speaker turned around trying to find out who the boy was talking about. See, because in his mind, he wasn't fat no more. You see, he was, he was dropping it. He was dropping it. Zigzag. He was dropping the weight off because he already made up in his mind, I'm losing this. I'm losing this. I, I ain't the same big old 400 some pound man. I'm losing it. And, and he was losing it. And he forgot that he was fat at all. And he eventually lost it all because, see, that wasn't him anymore. You, you, you hear what I'm saying? That wasn't him anymore. You've been purged. That's not you anymore. Look at the beautiful work God has done. And if you really had a messed up past and God has cleansed you, why can't people recognize the beautiful work of art? And you tell people, if God can cleanse me, don't be mad. He can cleanse you. Don't y'all be mad. He can cleanse you. So you say, praise the Lord. To them that are mature. To them that are mature, God can cleanse you. And that's what it's all about, people. When you come to Christ and you become saved, you're not perfect overnight. But the thing is, is as you see the light, do what? Walk in it, not away from it. Some of y'all still sitting on the sideline. God is showing you the light that will help you change. If, but why, why haven't you walked into the light with this? I ain't ready yet. Well, that ain't on God. Because the light ain't going to always be there. The Bible says, as you see the light, do what? You better walk in it. Lest darkness overtake you, what? Suddenly. Listen. I can sit up here and tickle your ears. But I'm not going to do that. I really mean for you people to live safe for real. And you cannot do it practicing sin. Sure, we may fall and get up, but you can't live sinful every day and call yourself a Christian. And if anybody tell you that they are a liar, a false prophet, a wolf in sheep clothing. And if they admit it, they're a baby wolf in sheep clothing. But they're lying to you. Is anybody hearing me? You got to be cleansed. Be ye holy because the Lord thy God is what? Be ye holy because the Lord thy God is what? Holy! According to God's wisdom, not the wisdom of this world. Finish this, preacher. But as it is written, I have not seen, nor ear heard, neither have entered in the heart of man the things which God hath prepared for them that love him. But God hath revealed them unto us by his Spirit. For the Spirit searcheth all things, yea, the deep things of God. For what man knoweth the things of a man, save the spirit of a man which is in him? Even so, the things of God knoweth no man, but the Spirit of God. You understand that? God reveals these things to, the, to those that love him. Amen. See, he reveals to us the secrets and the understanding. That's all we can understand the Bible. I have not seen you have written to the ear, man, the things that God has in store, but he reveals them to us. You see, the people who crucified Jesus would be more justified in the day of judgment than some of us. Because they didn't know who he was. But we do. Oh. And, and it said the Holy Ghost searched the things of God. What man knoweth the things of a man except the spirit of a man, right? Your spirit which is in you knows you. Even so, the things of God nobody knows but the spirit of God. So you need to be careful what you say God is saying. Anybody hear me? All these makeshift dreams. All these funny dunny discernments. You know, uh, 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 if, the if the clock, if the clock don't, if the, if, the, if, the ch if the chime on the clock don't strike, I know God wants me to do this. Look, get, get rid of all that mess. 
If I get a phone call, then I know God is in it. Look, get rid of this mess. Because you might not get the phone call, but God's still in it. No God. God is a for sure God. He don't give confused things. He don't base things. He, don't, he doesn't give you a will or word based on your emotions. Or based on other people. It comes directly from the Holy Ghost. Anybody hear me? God hates it when you say God said it, and he didn't say it. Well, I had a dream that I bought a, a brown car, and somebody brought me a red car. And then again came a blue car, and then somebody brought a Mack truck. Bitch, what that mean? Nothing. You want a car. You want a car. Evidently, you want a car. And don't let people get mad. Don't let spiritual people get mad. I want something to go sour, and we got all kind of dreams popping up. And Bishop, I had a dream. Click. Bishop. 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 Click. You created a dream. I feel a virtue. I said you got mad and made up a dream. Somebody asked me, I'm going to take that back. No. No, I'm not. Let God give you dreams. Because dreams are real when they come from a real source. Sometimes we dream based on our own confusion. Bishop, I had a dream that the wind was going this way, then it was going that way, and the chief was going that way. What that mean? You're confused. That means you're confused. Finish this. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God. Anybody got their Bibles open? I want y'all to read that with the preacher. Read that. Take the time so everybody can read it. We're not trying to show smart, y'all. Uh, smart or not. But uh, whatever that is, read it slowly so they can catch on. Come on. Now we have received not the spirit of the world, but the spirit which is of God that we might know the things that are freely given to us of God. Did you all read that for yourself? Amen. I'm not making this up for you. You all understand that, right? It says, talk to me. We have not received the spirit of the world, but what? Don't, don't, don't be afraid to say what you're reading. But we, but, but we see what? We receive what? That we may know the things that are what? Given to us by what? Then how is it that when you receive the Spirit of God, you do nothing but worldly things? How is it that you receive the Spirit of God, but you've got ungodly behavior? I feel a virtue. You are against holiness. It's hard for you to live right. There must be a problem. Somebody asked what the problem is. Thanks for asking. They must not have the Spirit of Word of God is not going to change something for you or me. Amen. If the Bible says the Holy Ghost teaches us holy things, then that's what he does. If the Spirit in you is not teaching you holy things, it must not be the Holy Ghost. And you can get mad if you want to, but hey, don't get mad at me because you're a blasphemer and an imposter. A minister and a saint of Satan. The Bible talks about that. Read. Which things also we speak, not in the words with man's wisdom teaches. We don't speak this stuff according to man's wisdom. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. But which the Holy Ghost teaches. The Holy Ghost does teach, isn't that right? Yeah. But then other spirits teach to them. That's right. Now turn quickly to it. First Timothy chapter 4. Real quick, keep your hand there. I want to show you. You've got to be careful what spirit is teaching you. And how do you know spirits teaching you sometimes when you're out doing the wrong thing? You hear ideals coming to your head. These are spirits teaching you. First Timothy the four, read. First Timothy four, verse one. Now the Spirit speaketh expressly. The Holy Ghost speaketh with all concern. That in the latter time, in this day and time, the latter time, some shall depart. Not everybody, but some people shall depart from the faith. From the faith, the truth, the apostle doctrine. Giving heed. Giving heed. This seducing. Paying close attention to spirits. spirits. Seducing spirits. And doctrines. The word doctrine means teaching. Of devils. Teachings of devils. Turn back. 
So devils teach and the Holy Ghost teaches. But Jesus said, my sheep know my voice. And the voice of a stranger they're free from. Read. Comparing spiritual things. Comparing spiritual things. With spiritual. With spiritual things. Every law that man makes is all right. Except when it goes against God, we stand with God. When it goes against God, we stand with God. Anybody hear me? We believe in biblical marriage because it's scripture. But the world says same-sex marriage is acceptable and it is legal in a lot of places. Because they legalize it, don't make it right. We stand with God. And because they say biblical marriage may be wrong, don't make them right. We stand with God. Anybody hear me? They want to legalize drugs everywhere. They want to legalize it. Because they legalize it, don't make it right. The Bible said that God is going to judge the world because they didn't repent of the sorcery. And in that word sorcery is abuse of medication and drug abuse. Anybody hear me? You don't want to be judged for it. God can save us and set us free. And, and everybody look at me crazy. Y'all y'all know y'all know where y'all come from. Y'all everybody look at me crazy. Y'all y'all sanctified folk. Y'all know where y'all come from. Uh, some of y'all used to smoke, drink it. Sell it. Y'all ain't hear me. Uh, Bishop, please. Bishop, please. Bishop, please. Come on, yeah. Thank God for bringing you out. Amen. Hello. Hello. Thank God for bringing you out. Paul said, don't, don't run around with the whole mother and the fornicators and the drunkards and the adulterers and the idolaters and the sorcerers. He said, which was some of you? But now you've been cleansed, isn't that right? Amen. Isn't that right? Amen. Now you don't light up no more, isn't that right? Isn't, isn't that, and he's right, ain't he? <laughs> I'm just asking. <laughs> I'm just asking. It's half right anyway. Okay then, gotta be right. All right. I'm just telling the truth. He brought us out. And we need to stay out. Read. But the natural man, the natural man, receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Now you see why you're so folks so backslidden through when, when you start looking, look, when you start leaning on your own spirit, you can't understand God. You can't even understand his grace and mercy. He's giving it to you every day. The carnal minded man, the man that thinks like this world, you don't understand why we dress the way we do, talk the way we do, look the way we do, pray the way we do. You're not gonna never understand it. Because the world is against God. Read. For they are foolishness unto him. They're foolishness unto them, man. This don't make no sense. All right, worldly man, worldly woman. Neither can he know them. Neither can you know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. They are spiritually discerned. And you ain't got no spirit leading you when you're worldly man. But go ahead. But he that is spiritual, he that is spiritual judge of all things. Judge of all things. Yet he himself is judge of no man. You ain't got a right to judge me. That's what you think. The church don't judge the world. But we judge the church. We will judge the world when the day of the Lord comes. And it says that. But we don't judge the world, but we judge the house. That's what the book says. God will deal with them that are without. Read. For who have known the mind of the Lord? Who can know the mind of the Lord? That he may instruct him. Mm -hmm. But we have the mind of Christ. Do we? Do we have the mind of Christ? Everything we do is it with the mind of Christ. The Bible says whatever we do with word and in action, do it in the name of the Lord. Come out from the world and be separate, said the Lord. Don't allow evil spirits and, and, and wicked things to push you back. You go forward. Thank God for his mercy and his grace, and show forth your thankfulness by the new life you live, by the change of life. Then people can see the glory of God in you, and they can give God all the praise, because they can see the change. Is that all right? God doesn't feast off of your downfalls. Love doesn't rejoice in iniquity. God has no glory in that. 
but he rejoices in you coming out. And that's how we should be. These people that lead, follow the wrong spirit, God allows all things. But that ain't the Holy Ghost. Holy Ghost doesn't work that way. You got to guide your life by the Spirit of God. And if God is in not, if He's not in what you're doing, then it must be the devil. But God is able to give us a brand new start. If we had known, if they had known, the Romans, the Jews, if they really had known who he was, they would not have crucified him. But they didn't know. So now if you really know God, is that enough knowledge in you of God to make you change your life whereby it's pleasing to him? What is your excuse? Can you say, well, God, I, I didn't know. That's why I continued in the path that I was taking. What is your excuse? They didn't know, so he said, Father, forgive them, for they know not what to do. What kind of prayer can he pray for you? Can he say, forgive them, for they know not what to do? I feel a virtue. 